Hello and welcome to Model Kit Beginner. Hope you guys are doing alright. I thought I'll give you, after four years, five years, a little update on my airbrushing and uh, how I do it, what I do, um, just to give you a little insight and if you can pick up a tip or two, well that's wonderful. Right, what we are talking about, we are talking about the five airbrushes I mostly use and uh, let's have a quick look at those shall we let's just do that like that here we go there you go there you see the airbrushes and uh, from uh, top left is the ultimate apex airbrush then you see the iwata hbc plus underneath you see the uh, badger 105 patriot right over here then we have a nondescript outer shell of a Chinese uh, airbrush with Sparmax and aircraft parts inside. And down below, last but not least, the uh, Ultra from uh, Hardline Steenbeck. Jeez, name just got me out here. And these are the five airbrushes I mostly use. Some of them I use a lot, others I use every now and again. So let uh, I think we should go down to the uh, to the bench and have a look at each of them, what I like about them and what I don't like about them, and um, uh, I'll see you downstairs on the bench. Well, and here we are down at the bench with the airbrushes as announced, and I'll go through those quickly from I don't know most to least or least to most interesting. Anyway, let's have a look at this one. Let's go a little bit further down. That's as far down as I can get, I suppose. Here we go. So that is a normal standard Chinese airbrush. It has this setting here at the back where you can uh, set how far back your needle should go. I never use it. Um, and I have used it before and found that the needle clocking, if you only push it back to a certain point, is a is a real possibility so i i don't use that uh, it has a, the largest cup of all my airbrushes right over here and then obviously it on the inside i have this needle right over here which is an aircraft needle aircraft is a south african airbrush manufacturer makes decent airbrushes from uh, from most of the Chinese part, I would assume. Then we take uh, this one off. This is what it looks like from the front, right over here. Then obviously we can take this one off here. And there you see the needle right over here. And you can obviously also take the needle off with a little spanner. I do this as little as possible, if not at all, because I don't like uh, these, these needles are very sensitive. Now this needle uh, is an aircraft needle, uh, this needle, this nozzle is an aircraft nozzle, in other words, bought locally. Um, this is the point three, I'm sure it's a point three no needle nozzle combination couple of parts are from my Sparmex but I like the feel of this airbrush more and uh, this airbrush has a, a use in my arsenal this is my priming airbrush so this is the airbrush I mostly use to prime the uh, reason is it has the biggest cup of all of them it doesn't need to be hugely doesn't need to be hugely um, precise so not for not for base coating base coating you don't need to have a precise airbrush not necessary at all and works very well here we go does very very well what I sometimes have is that this gets trigger gets stuck I guess that's the little um seal here where it goes in to the valve 
and that swells up with thinness and then you know these things sometimes can get stuck i only have it on this airbrush it just shows you quality does count to and uh, not on any other and uh, yeah but it works very well i have this one for three years works very very well has a nice huge capacity they all come with lids which all these expensive ones do not come with yeah and as i say it has a reasonable capacity right down here right priming airbrush done then for my next trick let's pull out old faithful now this is the oldest airbrush in my arsenal and many of you will recognize it it is uh, the badger 105 patriot and this uh, is a beta i use this these days mainly for nail polish so i my all my nail polish colors go through there I have uh, replaced the needle and the nozzle once because not of badger, but it has a. That is the main disadvantage and great point I have with this airbrush. The protection of the needle is not very good. So if you just ding it anywhere, you can bend this needle very, very, very uh, easily, which of course you don't want. Uh, there's a medium sized cup right over here. I think it's nine mil or seven mil one of the two and uh, i have it since 2016 i think and you can see it has been beaten around and you can also see the surface finish is not as good as others not quite sure if it's chromed or if it's just nickel but yeah it, it does wear off with time but otherwise you can see it has uh, this opening here where you can pull back your needle when you're busy cleaning um, it has a little bob here at the end, which I'm not a huge fan of because you cannot pull out the needle from the front should you want to do that. Here we go. There's the needle. It's a 0.5 if I remember correctly. Then it has this kind of uh, trigger button. Now the other one, the Chinese one you have seen, it has a little, it's an articulated uh, trigger button. So in other words, it has a little uh, hinge there, which makes it a pain in the butt to uh, get it in and out. Let me show you what I mean. Here we go. Right. Now this is the one which the Sparmax has and lots, all of the Chinese airbrushes have. They have a little hinge here where this little pin goes into the valve to get your air out and to get this in and out is always a fiddly fiddly business i rather prefer what they have done here with badger which is a solid uh, pin so there's no problem getting it in you get that in and hit the valve every time and no fiddling required very good just put that one to one side here we go then uh, it is very rugged as i said the top finish is not the best the other disadvantage which a gripe which i have with this particular airbrush is this thing here this little uh, holder wait let me see i have a fancy website which i opened up which tells you what all these parts are this is the back lever well Take your word for it. Anyway, this back lever right over here, you can pull it out. Well, with other airbrushes, as you will see, it's actually connected to this particular part, which, let's come on while we are at it, is known. Well, the whole assembly I don't know, but yeah, it's known as the uh, tube shank. So yeah, they are normally uh, connected to the tube shank or even better to the uh, trigger right over here and uh, a particular one isn't so it comes loose so you have to fiddle it in and then get everything in. so not ideal but it's not not a train smash but it's not ideal and uh, so that's what i don't like about it uh, the cup could be bigger it's not the biggest of all the cups it might have been one of the smallest 
so cup could be slightly bigger and as I said the finish is not a chrome finish and it scratches it really does especially if you use it like me it scratches but it has a totally different needle design let me show you it has Now here you can see there's a needle coming out and when we have a look at another uh, brush which is also from Badger, built by Badger, I'll take it all out and we can have a closer look. But yeah, that is a, the needle is a, a floating needle design as they say and it, uh, the nozzle I mean, a floating nozzle design and uh, the nozzle is a lot bigger and can therefore be easier removed. The chances of losing it is a lot less. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of people who prefer that. I personally take the nozzles out as little as possible. You will hardly ever find me taking the nozzle out of the airbrush, apart from when it's really, really clogged. But I normally try to avoid airbrushes to be really, really clogged. But on the other hand, what you can do, what I do when I do a deep clean, just fill it up with a little bit of thinness. I take obviously the needle and everything out and then I pop it in like that so that the needle is, uh, the nozzle is in the thinner solution and then just let it uh, work in here and uh, spray one through and it is pretty, pretty clean. Right, that is Old Faithful, beaten up Benja 105, still runs very strong with the second needle and nozzle set then while we are on that let's have a look at the ultimate apex now you have heard me about uh, the design problems which i had with the patriot this one is also actually built by badger for an um, ultimate modeling uh, products ump and they call it the apex ump apex is what that one looks like doesn't have at the back like uh, the uh, Patriot doesn't have this screw for in my opinion not needed it's like a Mac valve it's not needed um, uh, it has also a solid trigger right over here this one came with a 0.35 needle I believe here we go and you see the trigger is the very same design as we have seen with the uh, Patriot. Then here, let's take this one out. And I can tell you what I meant uh, with the Patriot. Come on, come on, boy, you can do it. Right, so this is what this looks like. And here you see these little part right over here. This one I'm talking about. Yeah. This and the Patriot is a separate part. It's not connected to the trigger stem right over here. And uh, very easy to lose, very difficult to fiddle in. So it's not uh, very good on the Patriot very good and obviously fixed on the Apex the other thing which the Patriot had a problem with was the needle which popped out now let's have a look if it does it here as well let's just uh, put it together quickly and as you can see putting together an airbrush or taking apart an airbrush is not difficult you can do that uh, most people would do that fairly easily and uh, that obviously makes it very user-friendly, makes it very easy to clean. Right, are you going in here? Yes, you are. Right, let's put our valve trigger in. There you go, that's in. Let's put that in a little bit further. Right, then we have the needle, which doesn't have the blob at the end. So another improvement from, uh, from the Patriot and some other Badger air guns. Certainly good. Then uh, we 
just secure it here at the end. And then if you look here in front, there's no needle sticking out. Yes, so the guys from UMP designers designed this one right, but it also doesn't have, like we saw on the Chinese one, it doesn't have this deep uh, cover, needle cover. And a lot of people take this needle cover off when they are getting close to subjects, uh, reason being that it, uh, that it clogs, especially with the... Uh, somewhat thicker paint and it does yeah you, that is you get uh, s forks needle covers which are a little bit more conducive to cleaning but obviously people as i said take that off when they get close so obviously the danger of taking them off is that you can bend your needle because this is there to protect your needle so uh, and it is an extra part which i think the apex has solved very very good it has uh, this indentation here you can see it right around but it still protects the needle and it doesn't clog up as quickly if at all whatsoever which is the reason that this is my airbrush which i use for clear coating mostly 2k clear coating it is an absolute workhorse you could have only this airbrush and could do everything with it priming painting um, putting 2k on it a clearing so this is done for everything so if you, you look you want an airbrush which does everything that's it last time i still got it in a box nice plastic box let's uh, take it out that's i believe last time people got it in a blister pack like the badger the badger came in a blister pack and uh, if i remember correctly it comes with a plastic lid which i'm not a fan of but i had a lot old lids kicking about from old Chinese airbrushes and they fit perfectly on there so not a problem here we go the apex ultimate airbrush if you're looking for an all-rounder which can do everything is affordable this would be the airbrush to buy I'm not quite sure how available they are at the moment probably not very because as soon as they come on the market they are gone in seconds and uh, but yeah keep an eye on the on the website of Ultimate uh, Modeling uh, Products, your UMP, and uh, you will see immediately once they come in. Right, the Apex, wonderful airbrush. Then we have a look at this one, which is a contentious airbrush. It's called the Ultra. It is from the folks over at Harder and Stiernbeck. It is made in Germany. And he would say, well, best airbrush ever, because I'm German. Uh, you'd think, no, it's not, it's not, it's not. But it is a fine airbrush. I'm sorry, it certainly is. Yeah, and I know some people don't like me saying this, yeah, but it is a fine airbrush. This particular one, I came with a pack with a small, uh, a small paint cup right over here and a different needle nozzle, 0.2 needle nozzle replacement. So that's how these ones come. Now, they don't have at the back this uh, stopper, which we said we don't like. What they also have is a removable paint can. Now, this is not like all the other Harder and Stiernbecks, a screw in. It just pops in like that. And I heard people say, oh, it falls out all the time. Can't use it. Useless airbrush. I have never had them fall out of me. Never, ever. Um, so maybe, maybe you've got a, a 41. Or, uh, yeah, never, never had that coming out of me. But would I prefer a screw in? Oh, yes, I certainly would. So, but that is the entry level for Harder and Stiernbeck. It's called the Ultra. But it has the same needles. It has the same nozzles. Let, let me show you this trigger design. It's German. They over-engineer sometimes stuff. That has happened. Might have happened before. Here we go. See, that is the trigger design right over here. And isn't that beautiful? And works very well, of course, but yeah. The ball at the bottom most beautiful trigger design in the business for sure and uh, let's just put that back in so we don't we don't lose it 
Oopsie. This one goes in here. I haven't taken that one apart in ages. Right. And uh, let's put the needle in. And I'll show you a little bit more how the nozzle design works on the harder and steam bags. Right, so you unscrew this. It's tightening too much. You help get some help. Here we go. This is the cover. One of the weak points, the needle cover. One of the weak points of the harder and Steambex Ultra, because they clock up very nicely, and it's not a separate cover. So every time you take the cover off, you basically take the whole needle, uh, the whole nozzle, off, which is not ideal not at all so that's what i don't like them at all you also get one with a uh, fork design where it's just a, a pen at the bottom and a little metal pin at the top and then you can clean it you know very nicely if you have to but this one no also you know blowing back with this uh, if you just put your finger in here it's not going to work because all the air will go out there and you will not blow back your thinners so uh, you just have to take a, a q-tip q-tip i don't know what a q-tip is here we go one of those just put it in here once your needle is out of course and uh, blow it back or well, pull your needle back and put it in here works fine for me it's not a train smash but it's not as good as others right and then it has a floating nozzle design so this is a bigger nozzle it's not one of these minute ones which break off very easily which doesn't screw in anywhere cannot break off so it's very sustainable and you just put it in here make sure it's in properly then you can just put it back and screw it on and there you go job done i use this one mostly for um there's a 0.4 needle for uh, metallics works very well for that it also has a 0.2 needle set and you can put the smaller paint cup on it it doesn't come with a lid and the normal standard lids does not fit on there so that's very poorly done so they want to force you to buy a lid which are yeah, very expensive harder and steel back parts very very expensive um is yeah, I will not buy another Harder and Steenbeck. It's just not worth the money, in my opinion. Also, where I live in South Africa, getting parts for these, or the badges, mind you, very, very difficult. As I said, we have a local um, distributor called Aircraft who distribute Chinese uh, airbrushes, which they quality control first and make sure they work properly. And this is what we get here for a reasonable price, or what you also get, what you get parts for and what you get airbrushes for if you have the money to do so is my latest addition to the airbrush collection it's the Iwata HPC plus here she is there you have it very very nicely it has a nice chrome finish also nice and dirty see throw it nice chrome finish right over here very good very well protected and uh, it had what is the main main advantage of this particular airbrush or what i really like about it just show you how it comes it comes in a box like this and it actually comes with a lid look at that and it comes as you can see with one of these spanners so you know where this is going yeah yeah now let's start here at the back it comes with uh, one of these stoppers which i as i said do not use it comes with the needle right over here it's a 0.3 needle nozzle uh, combination then it comes with this here we go let's just loosen this a bit Let's just take this off. Here we go. Let me just show you how that works. So it has this also where the 
little trigger help over here is connected which of course we have found out is very good we don't want that having a loan floating around it has a very uh, specific trigger design i water does that it has kind of these little uh, uh, knobs or helps sticking out and they then fit i don't know not sure you can see that let me see let me get a, an additional light going maybe on the other side here we go let's see if you can see it uh, i'm trying i'm trying huh? don't don't be ugly here we go get a bit of an idea let's looks inside so it fits into a groove right at the side over here and on the other side make sure you always have it in a perfect position i never had it in a wrong position any other airbrushes but this is how iwater does it so this is their trigger also no hinge on the trigger very easily to put together then it has a needle cover right over here one of those solid needle covers which can clog up, yes, 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 it can. And uh, then it also has this particular needle. Here we go. And this obviously works, as you have seen, you have seen the spanner in the box, you remove it with the spanner. The needle only goes up to here. So that little part in front, that is the nozzle needle, I always say needle, that is the nozzle. That's the point 0.3 nozzle which is on here uh, and that's all you have and uh, that obviously is not ideal not ideal I like I like the floating nozzle design I think it's very very good but but I haven't taken that nozzle out ever so far not at all don't think you need to don't think it's necessary so you don't need to take that nozzle out at all this airbrush has an unbelievable nice um, diffusion of the paint which comes out at the front which as a second and very important point makes it uh, very economical to use because it doesn't use a huge amount of paint it uses a lot less paint than uh, any of the other airbrushes you have seen and it distributes it very nicely, very evenly. This is the airbrush I use for all my colors. And uh, it is just the most beautiful color distributing airbrush ever. It's probably the best airbrush I have in my collection. It certainly is the Saar HPC Plus. They are, compared to the harder and thin bags and compared to the really expensive, the really expensive iWaters, they are still affordable and they are quality. Now here's a needle I want to show you something which is also controversial and that's what we do you know <laughs> but uh, I don't care. This needle I polish and people say ah oh, polishing needles doesn't make a difference. Are you out of your mind? Oh yes it makes a lot of difference. It certainly does. I can tell you that for nothing. Especially on the cheaper airbrushes I can tell you that Polishing the needle makes them a different airbrush and I polish my needles once every one, two months and uh, and it ma makes a difference to me. Yeah, you think it doesn't make a difference for you, all right, good on you, certainly does make a difference on me. Now how do I do that? Terribly complicated thing to do. Here we go, that's how I do it. It's my little cordless screwdriver, that's what I use. And I use a microfiber cloth right over here. Then I put on a little bit of auto cream. Now, any polishing cream will probably do. Uh, other people use uh, Brasso. That also works very well. I have a bit of Brasso here as well. So what you do, you just put a little bit of your polishing cream on your cloth. You have your needle right over here and then you just let it run and 
And uh, here we go. I look a bit awkward now in front of the camera because I normally don't do it like that. I normally keep it in my hand. But uh, look at the cloth. Look at what is coming off that needle. So uh, that's what's coming off when you polish a needle. And I really do think it does make sense. Here we go. Yeah. And then we have a look at the needle itself, what it looks like. Here you go. Nice and clean. Let's get my hand away from there. Here we go. Nice and sharp polished needle point. And uh, mm. I love it. I really do love it. What I do then do, I just loop, put a little bit of loop here in front. What loop do I use? Uh, it is, where is my loop? Here we go. I use this one, but you get needle juice from Iwata. This is the Badger one. You get it from different uh, fabricators. And uh, as you can see, well used. Put a little bit of juice here on at the front of the needle and then push it back in to the airbrush like we do right now here we go in very smoothly put that on screw it closed and that's it that's ladies and gentlemen is the iwater hbc plus so if i have to recommend one this is my absolute favorite. It's a wonderful, easy to use, easy to clean, precise, uh, well atomizing airbrush. It paints beautifully and I really like the way it works. It feels nice, it feels professional and uh, yeah, I, I can recommend it. So if you see an HPC Plus and they are around and as this is actually Iwata is actually where you also get spare parts in. South Africa which is very nice so if you see uh, one for a good price I think they're around about $200 right now um, uh, seen for 179 pounds I got that one for a bargain I was very lucky and uh, here in South Africa probably was kicking around for a while and nobody wanted it but yeah I've seen otherwise I've seen them in South Africa at Pegasus for six and a half thousand Rand which is crazy it's not the price you should pay for one of those right Okay, let's uh, go back upstairs and uh, let's say goodbye. And right, here we are, back up uh, in uh, my little hut. You might hear some background noise, it just started raining. You also see some insulation here at the back, which will go up into the roof. Summer is coming in Cape Town and it will be unbearable hot here if I don't do that. Right, as I said, uh, my favorite aircraft brush uh, of all of them is uh, these where is she here we go there is my camera is that iwata hpc plus beautiful airbrush 0.3 needle atomizers paint unbelievably well and uh, yeah if i ever have money to buy another one it will be one of these for sure for sure now well, that's for sure uh you can't beat the workhorse which is um, the Patriot 105 or if you want to beat it and you get hold of one ultimate apex airbrush is certainly the one to go also rugged uh, badger design with a couple of or quite a few design improvements which makes it a better airbrush hard on steering back I don't need one I don't need another one I got the ultra because I wanted to see what it goes what it what it does and uh, yeah, I'm not going to buy another one, not necessarily. Certainly not going to buy the Infinity or the more expensive airbrushes from Harder and Sternbeck. And then obviously, as I say, if you buy a cheap Chinese airbrush and you get yourself a decent needle nozzle set, you are halfway there. You can certainly use that airbrush, uh, polish your needle 
and uh, and go for it you know i actually now use it for primer but I, for years and years i've used it for for painting as well and and it worked worked okay worked fine certainly not as good as the iwata but it worked okay and uh, that is certainly a way to go if you say well i don't have 200 dollars now to buy an iwata well that that's certainly a way you can go since the apex is not available right now until this one comes around and then i would suggest to get yourself an apex you don't get a better airbrush for that price i think last time it was 80 pounds and uh, yeah there is nothing better around uh, for that price for sure otherwise yes my recommendation is the iwata so if i have to rank them the iwata the apex um the patriot and then i only would come in with the ultra Right, thanks very much for looking. Hope you enjoyed that little update on my uh, spray painting adventures. And uh, I'll make it a studio day as soon as it stops raining because it always just adds a bit of background noise, which is not very nice. And uh, I uh, hopefully see you guys soon. Have a lovely day and greetings from Cape Town. Cheers.